Welcome everyone, this is Coaching In Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're gonna to be talking about how you can get your health back to true functionality. Because if you think about yourself, right? When you're younger, you're running around, everything is perfect. And then you're older, maybe you're playing sports, you get an injury, maybe you can heal from it and you can still go pro. Or maybe what happens is the injury defines you and then you're not able to go back. After you become a career person, maybe you become a family person, you have a bunch of kids, and now you're living that lifestyle. If you're ever behind a desk for multiple hours, sitting for multiple hours, maybe you're finding that you're starting to slouch over more. Maybe you're finding that you have more pain in your knees, in your back, wherever. And you're just saying, well, this is just due to old age. But in reality, it's due to the choices and the decisions that you have been moving in. So moving toward health can be an option. Moving toward pain is what most people do. And it's not that they do it on purpose. I don't want people to realize that, oh, the reason I'm in pain is because I'm my own worst enemy. Well, you're not far off from the truth because in a sense, what you don't do is going to harm you. But most people just don't know. Most people don't realize that, oh, if I get a nine to five and I do this for the next 40 years, there's going to be health repercussions. When am I going to start to pay attention? And most people don't start to pay attention until something is broken, until a knee needs replacement. Something is going to happen that's going to make you pay attention. Today, this episode is going to act as that for you so you don't have to go through the pain, that you don't have to go through the trouble, so you don't have to go through that moment where you have a deciding factor. Are you going to be a grandparent that can't run with their grandkids? Or are you going to give yourself that mission that regardless of age, you're going to be in peak functional health? And this is something that many people want, I think, to some degree, but they're not willing to do it or they just don't know how. So let this episode serve to the how audience, because most people that are trying to get to better health, they just need a little bit of guidance. They need a little push. They need a little bit of information. And they need people that are going to be there to help them along the way. My guest today, Benjamin Mayworth, he is a functional health practitioner over at Functional Patterns Texas, part owner. He is going to be sharing some of his wisdom, his experience, and helping us understand just how functional patterns can help you change your whole entire life. Welcome, Benjamin Mayworth, to Coaching in Session. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Michael. How are you? Doing well. Thanks so much for coming on. Today, we're going to be having you on helping people with health and wellness. You are a functional health practitioner. What you do is unique, even though it is something that's up and coming, it's going to be like the new age health and fitness. Because I think sometimes like when we look at the future, many people didn't think that their smartphones would be able to do everything. That's why teachers would say, hey, you can not have a calculator in your pocket at all times, but yet here we are today. We have phones that have more technology than some of the first launches into space. And it's because technology is moving at a rapid pace. But since technology is moving at a rapid pace, shouldn't we also move at a rapid pace? Our mind, our body. Yet many people were just living in the same type of mentality, the same type of body. We're doing the same things and we're not adjusting to how our life is now. We live in a world of sitting behind a computer screen, working from home, and that causes so many ailments. We have gone so far from the hunter-gatherer mindset and lifestyle. And what you do is you get people into the new age of fitness, the new age of living, and the new way of health. In your own words, can you tell the world who you are, what you do, and how you help? For sure. Yeah. Once again, Michael, thank you very much for having us on. And like you explained, we are essentially moving into a, a new direction of taking people's bodies and health in general into a place where they feel like they have a bit more control and more of like a tangible grasp about how they can understand how to use it. And then they find the ability to use that. They can do all the things they want to do, go about their daily living without any pain, or they're trying to tap into a little bit more of a physical prowess they've always wanted to tap into, they can. But my name is Benjamin. I'm a human biomechanics specialist. 
and functional patterns practitioner at our facility here in Texas called Functional Patterns Texas. Essentially, we're just helping people tap into their biological roots, the fundamental aspects of what makes us human. When you look around, I think we can all agree we stand, then we walk, and then from that motion there, we do other things like sprinting, throwing, and all the other athletic endeavors we are essentially capable of doing. So we just fundamentally take it from the ground up, getting people to organize their strength conditioning training programs, their corrective exercise programs, and their postural health integrated in one system to stand, to walk, to run, and to throw using all the muscles of the body and having less limitation on the issues that pop up with other training methodologies. So that way they don't have to deal with the joint pain or the surgeries or any other discomfort they're going to experience later down in life. There's a fallacy that people think that as they get older, pain is going to be inevitable. They're going to have back pains. They're going to have joint pains. And they're going to say, you know, it's just age. It's just, you know, where I am right now in life. But that is so far from the truth. And I actually had the honor of spending some time with you. And I can see firsthand what you do at your facility here in Texas. And it is amazing to say the least, because when you get people out of that mindset of this is just my circumstance, it is so powerful. Why do you think so many people get into this mindset with maybe age, with onset of pain? They say, okay, well, this is just what I have to deal with now. I guess we could fundamentally look at the patterns of behavior that's rooted from an idea called like the said principle, the specific adaptations to impose demands. So for example, if I always do sprinting and long distance running, and that's my physical activity that I've always done since I was a kid, or even as a young adult, or even to my adulthood, that's all I ever did, then my body will only know that. It will adapt to that. And It'll get comfortable with that. It'll never move outside of that. Or say, for example, take someone who does tennis their whole life, and they're always in a position of using their arms and their body over and over again. It might be a little bit foreign or difficult or new for them to understand how to use their body kind of like a basketball player or like a Barry Sanders or being able to throw a a baseball really powerfully or effortlessly. So from a young age, there's systems and patterns of behavior that we're being introduced to. Some of us have uh, genetic blueprints that are a bit more suitable for athletic endeavors, so we can adapt to different stimuli and facets of motion. So it's a bit more comfortable, more easy, I guess you could say, to figure out how to navigate those different parameters of movement. And there's others that just go their whole life just doing, only doing a one specific regimented thing. As we get older, the body will always carry over those genetic adaptations as we get older, and it's difficult to get the brain and the body together to understand, well, maybe we should stop doing something that we're doing over and over and over again that's a habit or maybe no longer an intentional pattern of behavior. How can we organize a different piece into that or maybe change the whole structural system around that pattern of behavior? to develop something or to discover something that's going to be healthier, more beneficial in the long term. So as we grow up, if we play organized sports all the time, we're probably going to be more adept to team playing or being a part of groups. If we're independent and we're always doing something specific, say maybe like tennis, then we're only going to probably be more comfortable on things that focus more on the intricate skill set of our independent person. You can apply this concept to anything with the way we've been told about nutritional health, diet, water intake, sleep hygiene, the whole gambit of things that go into our collective health. And I think as we age and get older, sometimes we deal with people and even ourselves, we tend to get stuck in our ways a little bit. Sometimes get a little bit stubborn behind, we just gotta stick to that one thing because that's what we've always done. But what we start understanding is the body likes to adapt to what it does most. So if I'm always hooked on a certain sports drink for like 15 years, then it's going to take more than just 15 opportunities for me to stop having a fixation around that pattern or that habit of that sports drink to eventually taper that off 
to just know, you know what, I don't need that sports drink. I might need just a little bit of sea salt, water, and a little bit of lemon juice to be the replacement to that old pattern of behavior or stimuli. I hope that kind of gives it a more broad description there. We can go into more specifics as we keep digging in. And it's amazing how we don't even knowingly know we are just growing up, knowingly know that we are creating habits for our body. So as you said, if you're a basketball player, if you're a tennis player, if you're a football player, that is your identity, number one. But then it also becomes your body's identity. And I think many people don't understand that because when they're done with college or they're done with school or whatever sports they're playing, they're going off into the real world. There's a shift. You're no longer doing what you have been doing. Many people, they have a hard time adjusting. So like this is where people gain weight. This is where people start to have more problems. And the brain has a lot to do with this, but the body is also part of the problem because it's the vessel for us to move, to run, to jump, to sit. If we're not giving it constant attention in the sense of, all right, I'm going to check in. I'm going to see if everything is moving right. Think about when's the last time you stretched? Many people probably don't even know. And, and I'm not saying that what you do is just stretching, but it's about alignment. It's about giving some attention to your health and your fitness where it's okay if it's working, right? People don't worry about their car unless it's broken, right? Oh, my car broke down on the side of the highway and now everyone's so worried about the car. But yet when it starts, no one necessarily cares about their tires or their oil change until they have to do it, right? So they get the light on, low tire pressure, oh, got to worry about it. They get the oil light, oh, I got to go change my oil. What about our body? We don't have that, right? So it's not until we gradually start to feel a little bit bad. It's not that bad yet. We don't take action quite yet, but there comes a point where it becomes excruciating. And now you're like, is this life? And there is some people that are going to say, this is life. You know, I'm just 50. This is what 50 year olds have to deal with. This is because of me having all of the kids that I had, right? So now, I have to live this life. I have to suffer. But what Benjamin has to offer is he's saying you don't have to suffer anymore. You don't have to live that life. You can go step into recovery. So I wanted to get into the steps of recovery now, right? So we talked a little bit about the idea of functional patterns and then why is it important? How can people start to see this as something that they should invest in, apply into their life? and then begin to live the life that they never thought they could now. Yeah, you're totally right, Michael. The, um, if I like to backtrack one little point, um, when you're talking about all the things that come at us during life, I think what we can both fundamentally agree on is the simple notion of the environment, who you surround yourself with, right? If you always have folks that say, oh, the, you know, it's 30, this is the kind of joint pain that we have, or oh yeah, we're 50, our body starts breaking down. We can start seeing that in all facets of our life, whether it's like when you have children, they say, oh, when you have children, oof, say goodbye to sleep. Oof, when you have children, oh, your whole world changes. Well, it's like this specific uh, misery love company dialogue is always centered on the negative. And I think that's what's being proliferated into society and the environmental standard that everyone has been habitually input into or walked into and they just don't understand how to get outside of that cycle or that it's even possible or even maybe find another sliver to create a different cycle that's going to be more regenerative for them so whenever people are sitting there thinking about or looking at a solution it, the solution is only temporary because there's systems at play right your spouse your best friend your co-workers what you do for eight hours a day, back to the said principle, like the specific adaptation of imposed demands day to day is going to morph and develop your body into what it's going to do for the next seven years. We know that genetically and in your bones and then even psychological development even happens in seven year cycles. And what we've observed and seen with our practice on a results basis is the clients that stick with us for the long term. And even myself going into this past seven years, and I've been in the fitness industry since I was 18. I'm 32. So in the past decade, over a decade of experience, I've even seen my body gone through different adaptations that are very subtle, very nuanced, very different 
compared to the generality of just putting on lean mass or losing some body fat, but structurally actually looking and feeling and moving differently. Well, the steps to that from the fundamental standpoint at Functional Patterns Texas is we take every person in and we start with an assessment to give them a comprehensive analysis of what the data shows us. And that data is just friendly information to be more digestible, to open people's eyes to think about something they've never been introduced to. I've got ex-athletes, I've got current athletes, I've got people who are just mom and dad working their nine to five, taking care of the kids. I've got young bucks that are just hustling, they're entrepreneurs, marvelous, amazing, smart-minded people that have never taken a look in the mirror or a video, their postural position, their alignment, and then also their motion, like athletic, fast-moving, intricate dissection of what their body is doing. So during our assessment, we go through an in-body scan to see what the lean mass, skeletal mass ratios are in their body. We look at their posture. We look at their gait cycle, essentially the way that they walk and run. And then we get to work right out the gate. From the ground up, posture is very important because as you stand, that's going to dictate how you move. So say, for example, if I was sitting down right now in my chair and I'm like this for 40 hours a week, I'm just always like this. Chances are whenever I try to play basketball, I go walk with my dog, I just go play pickleball, or I do something like reading a book or maybe drinking some tea or playing chess, my body is just going to get stuck and comfortable here. This tells us a lot of information that we start observing in real time with our clientele that, and even psychology, uh, psychiatrists and psychology professionals even have observed that this postural position here is not just what we would typically call like excessive spinal flexion or a kyphotic postural position, but it's tied to anxiety, depression, right? And we start seeing these patterns of behavior, the, the postural holding vessel static image holding more than just, you know, these muscles are tight, these muscles are too lengthened. We can start understanding that this person is dealing with a lot of other things they never had someone help them understand. And when we come to this discovery process in their posture analysis is they'll start exclaiming things like, oh, wait a minute, is that why my neck's always hurting? Later in the session, they'll say, wait a minute, you know, that reminds me that one time I had an injury five years ago. Do you think it's, it's part of my shoulder whenever I did this thing or, you know, I fell off of a tree or uh, I was on a scooter and I tumbled over and landed on my neck wrong? And we start learning that if the body keeps the score or the body keeps count of everything you've ever experienced, we start observing that, yeah, it starts with posture and it holds everything together and it holds all the information that we either conscientiously know that's there, subconsciously also not know that's there, and all the other things in between it. And that's where we come in to let them know that there is a opportunity of having a systems approach to reorganize it and reshape it so that we don't have to deal with that pain. Or maybe they're dealing with a surgery they had for 20 years and just never had the optimal breath of life to move, organize, and feel like it's actually connected to the other parts of their body. Because like we both discussed and know, this arm is attached to the upper body and this upper body is attached to the hips and below that are your feet. So from the ground up posturally, that's the the main focus of trying to get all the muscles to work together. And after that, we apply it in a, uh, in a way to get the body to understand how to rotate, how to turn, how to undulate, how to have a little bit of swagger and strength to that with their arms and legs moving to one another so that when, when they are just simply walking around, they're able to explain in their brains and their bodies connecting together that, hey, maybe when I was walking in, I felt all of the engagement or uncomfortable tension or pressure just sitting in my hips and my knees. And after when I walk out of here, this makes sense. I'm using this muscle group system that they described to me based on the, this analysis profiling of my body that I really feel my glutes and my hamstrings supporting my hips and bringing my ribs up to my spine more so than I did walking in. Oh, I've never felt that before. Why is that? And I'm 41 years old. Hey, Benjamin. Hey, Functional Patterns Texas team. 
what is this? Like, let's move forward. I hope that gives a, a good encompassing starting point of, of the assessment part. And it helps create an awareness because people don't realize that they're hunched over most of the time. They are just doing it because it's natural to them. I can't tell you how many people that I've coached when I'm with them and we're just walking, maybe inside to the store, they're looking down to the ground. And this is beyond posture. I'm working with mindset. And so I ask them, I'll say, well, why do you walk looking down to the ground? They might say, oh, I, I didn't notice. Definitely posture, but also mindset. You become more confident when you look up. So people don't even know this, right? So your posture dictates your emotional mood. So if you are feeling down, you feel like feeling a little bit gloomy, change your posture. And people just think like, oh, you know, it just happens so gradually. Like if you ever see those pictures of like how we evolved as humans, like before we're just like monkeys and then eventually we start erecting ourselves. It is amazing how we evolve, but it's also amazing how we devolve, if that's even a word. Because we yeah. just kind of like doing this, right? We're kids, we're jumping off st- things, we're doing cartwheels, we're being rebels, we're being superheroes, we're jumping off steps. And then adults, we're afraid to do that because we're going to hurt our back. Yeah, we've, uh, we've observed that as like uh, degeneration. And it's environmental. It's the stimulus that you either put in your body correctly or incorrectly. And we've observed that people will, they'll be okay and the body will be okay with moving with a little bit of pain and limitation. And it's like compounding interest on top of just small band-aid, shorthanded solutions that don't take the, the full thing to account. So like you were talking about with mindset as well, we have observed that uh, the body's connected and interwoven through fascia. And fascia is connective tissue and essentially the matrix and the webbing that binds everything together. And it's also classified as a neuroendocrine organ. So essentially your hormonal state will be secreted through that connective webbing and it'll dictate what your body does. And also the stimulus that you put back into your body can reorganize it. So just like you, you mentioned, I do uh, observe that from all of our clientele that do come in, there will be a client that just constantly looks down, constantly looks down, constantly looks down. I'm like, do you notice that you're looking down every time that we're trying to get your, uh, your breathing to get extended into your spine, using your abdomen to contract, to pull you up, and your head always just naturally falls down every time we do that, and they'll say no. They're like, oh, why is that? I'm like, well, I don't know. What, what do you think? And then they'll revert back to something from childhood or it could be something maybe um, that could be traumatically embedded where they were scolded really unproductively growing up and they just was always in a position of having shame. And that was just encoded since they've been a kid. And then maybe this is the first time that they were able to unlock that, get it out of there. And then we give them uh, essentially a, a new way of looking ahead in life, right? I guess metaphorically and physically speaking, it doesn't make sense to look down in life, but to keep your head up in life and moving in the right direction, yeah. And what you're telling us is groundbreaking because the traumas that we had in the past affect who we are today. What I can do to explain it the best to people, let's say you hurt your leg. It doesn't matter which one, right? Left or right, you can pick. When you hurt that leg, you know what your body naturally does? It just shifts, okay? I can't walk on my left leg because I sprained my ankle. You're gonna put more pressure on your right leg. Now you're putting more pressure on your pelvis. And now you are just weighing yourself down and then eventually you might shift back, but typically your brain already learned that cue like, oh, left leg is hurt. And now you adjust it to it. And now you're gradually, again, it happens at such a gradual pace or a speed where it's like you don't really know what's happening. Think of aging right? If you look in the mirror every single day, you're not going to see that you're aging as readily. Now, if you look at a picture from 10 years ago, you're going to say, Jesus, I look so different. And our body is the same way. It's like that picture from 10 years ago. How often did you give attention to it? I want to ask you, Ben, how can people start to look at their body now? We're trying to get them to be more healthy, get better posture, as, as we say, is one of the first steps to look at the posture. What's the next step? Whenever they come into our facility and a client starts understanding from the ground up what they have to do from their postural orientation, we take them into our strength conditioning and corrective exercise protocols of getting all these muscle systems to work together. If you don't mind, Michael, um, I'm going to share a couple of posters that I have here. 
I know I don't currently um, have a, a HD image, but I'll make sure I put a, a link over so they can go to our website. And they can see it there. Uh, if you go to functionalpatternstexas.com, we have a more in-depth description about everything else that we do. As we can tell here, this is just one muscle system kinetic chain called the deep front line. And it runs all the way down to your tibia and your foot. But we take that into account of where you're breathing, your abdomen or your core, and your posture will ultimately be affecting all the superficial ones on the, uh, the front and the back. So if all these tissues are going to be laid on top of one another, you can start thinking about everything that happens on the inside is going to give you a visible expression on the outside and vice versa. And these muscle chain systems I'm talking about goes back to the biological characteristics of us being able to move our arms and legs opposite to one another as like an evolutionary blueprint or uh, an observational analysis of all humans in existence that these muscle systems work together left to right, right to left. So for example, if I'm looking at this kinetic chain here, everything on the left arm, left hand connects up back and across to the opposite right leg. So if I have, say for example, like a right foot pain issue or a right ankle pain issue, that might be coming from the glute and the pelvis, or it might be coming from the opposite shoulder of the rib, just kind of like what you described, Michael, the compensations that develop over time or from an injury or a trauma or just those little little breadcrumbs of, oh, I never slouch heavily, but I always lean my head to the right. I always lean my head to the right. Rinse, dry, repeat for about 20 years, and then you will have those things pop up over time. But uh, another one is the opposite side on the front. So whatever happens on the front happens on the back. Whatever happens to the left happens to the right. But your pec muscles and your biceps are going to be interdependent across your abdomen and your obliques to the other quad and inner thigh all the way to the top of the foot. Essentially, if you just look at it as an X and you spiral that on top of your body, on the front and the back, we try to get the client's brain and body to understand that in a progression of one month to three months, even six months. I even have some clients that had some really challenging developments in their body where they had surgically reattached knees. They had low back surgery when they were 15. And we had to find a little bit of time to get these muscle systems to reorganize themselves during that time. And then afterwards, they're able to feel better. They're able to perform better. And we're able to put more athletic mm, kind of motions in place for their bodies to understand how to use because these X's and these postural alignment developments of their body are in control. They're on, they're, they're turning on. They have a better mind-body association, connection, and feeling of actually how to use it for the first time in their lives. Or maybe they've always had an athletic propensity of how to do that, but we just take it to the next level. We give them a very deeply rooted understanding that that is my glute working, and that is my glute contracting and or lengthening whenever I put my leg forward or when I pull my leg backward. And during that step-by-step -step process, it's a culmination of corrective exercise met with strength conditioning exercise, met with breathing abdominal exercise, met with postural integration exercise, met with other nuanced exercises that are what would be dubbed more biomechanical and nuanced in nature, all in one. And so it's not just uh, working out a bicep and then learning how to stretch it and then taking a day off and then doing some mobility training on the elbow and the shoulder, but rather it's all of that in one session, in one week, in one month, because everything is dependent on one another. So if I am going to mess with this arm and shoulder, it's going to directly tie into that hip tightness I have in the other leg. It's going to be tied into that knee injury that I have on that same side. So whatever I focus on this arm is going to benefit over here on this opposite leg or then vice versa. If I am going to focus on that knee injury, it's got to travel all the way up the chain. So that way, three months, six months, one year from now, that pattern of behavior that we're now reestablishing is more of a intentional, purposeful operation system of living rather than just checking in, checking out in the weight room. Or rather just going through the motions, 
doing one hour of cardio and calling it a day. It's actually tuning into your body saying, man, I can actually breathe into this part of my chest or the back part of my ribs for the first time in my life. And I thought I knew how to breathe. But wow, this breathing thing that I'm learning here at Functional Patterns is tied into my pelvic floor and my groin and my glutes and my thoracic extensor muscles up into my chest. And I feel less anxiety. I feel just better. But I feel like I'm sore. And all I was doing was standing and using some specific cues to help turn on these muscle groups so that way I can go walk with my dog. And Michael, I didn't even talk about that, but speaking about the dog uh, metaphorical analogy here, that's what ultimately brought me to functional patterns. I've been a fitness professional since I was in college, graduated with exercise science kinesiology degree. Then I went on and got certified through multiple entities, all the big names, small names, all the intricate details, and all those systems and all that knowledge that I was applying to my clients kept coming back with limitations. And I met my first one whenever I blew out my back running with my dog. I was in Austin. I've been here for almost a decade, moved out from West Texas. I was like, I'm a fitness professional. I'm in Austin. I love this environment. Dog friendly. You can take your dog wherever you want. I'm going to go take a run with my dog. Two, three minutes in, one or two blocks down the road, blew out my back. And that's when it lit up the light bulbs. I was like, if I can't walk or run, with a dog. And then I can't even walk back to my house without being in pain. And I'm a physical peak health fitness professional representation of what I'm servicing to my clients. Then what good am I? I think I'm doing something wrong. This isn't working. And I found functional patterns back in college and I didn't dive in until, like you said, so even I met my own cognitive dissonance and demise, if you will, of having to learn the hard way but I caught it right then and there. Uh, There was a series of other low back tightnesses, knee pain, little sharp little things happening here and here between my joints as I was getting older, but I was 22, 23. I was like, I'm too young to start having this. Finding functional patterns, it reorganized the way I started seeing life. I was like, it's a payoff system that's long-term. You get to start from the ground up with the, the nitty gritty, the good, the bad, the ugly. And the things that you didn't even know that were there. And that's when I knew. I was like, this is what people need. They need a system and a a plan of action that's short-term, mid-term to pay off the long-term, rinse, dry, repeat. And things just become what we would say more efficient, more optimal, more functional. And that's what got me started into being certified. And when I got into this stuff, I was making life-changing results with my clients that were going into similar facets of, hey, I want to improve my posture. I want to run faster. I want to go on a hike, but I have this limitation, this pain, this surgery. I go to this professional and this doctoral professional, and they're doing all these small remedies that are isolated from one another instead of interwoven like these these honeycombs, octagons here. I guess they're hectagons, but it's an interwoven systems approach that we started observing that the body is dependent on. And they were able to change their brains, the way they were able to look at things, the way they were able to problem solve and troubleshoot things along our journey in their fitness endeavors. And it was pretty powerful to see that they would go out of their way now to find other tools to help support what we were doing. And this agreement we had was much more powerful than what I was doing previous, where I was just helping people check in and check out or Maybe I was able to make some sort of change on uh, in a limited fashion with a person's body or just saying, hey, you hit a new uh, PR, good job. Maybe you get that tight shoulder. Just make sure you stretch. I'll see you next time. We were actually making differences on people who have scoliosis, making differences on people in their 50s or 60s who have hip replacement, knee replacement surgeries, spinal fusions. We've been helping people that were in my age range, 20, 30, even now today where people in their they're teenage years that have sciatic pain, low back, nerve referrals, the whole gamut of things. It wasn't until functional patterns that, you know, coming across the system or having a, a podcast or having a YouTube video or having a book presented about this system that finally broke that, uh, that barrier and allowed me to take that stepping stone before it was too late. But no matter where people come into their fitness journey with us, We've helped anyone and everyone from the beginning to people that are already seasoned. We're able to get them into a new 
base of operation for their health, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And it's amazing because we are all born with our body. We learn from an early age how to stand, how to walk, how to run eventually. And then eventually we stop paying so much attention to that. We just kind of live life. And life can be very heavy. You're so worried about all the different things, bills, being a parent. You might have aging parents, so you have to take care of them. And there can be a lot, not on just the mind, but also the body. Many people just put off, put off, put off until something breaks, as it happened with you when you're walking your dog. And I am also looking at my life. It happened to me too. I had the sciatica issues. I was running, I was getting ready for a marathon and boom, it happened. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to take some rest. And I took some rest, but it wasn't a fix. I thought if I just stopped, it's going to heal automatically. But it wasn't until I went to a health professional like yourself, Benjamin, that I started to get better, that I started to change my life. And it wasn't just a body thing. It was a mindset thing because we have arms, we have legs and we move, we can do things. And we don't pay attention until we can't do them. What you do is you create that awareness for people. You help people get back into where they should be in alignment with rather than where they just fell into because of life and the circumstances. That is powerful because you have a parent who wants to run with their child. They can't. How do we get back to that? You have someone who has to provide for their family. They have a hard time waking up every single morning. They might have to pop pain pills just to get through the day. How do we get past that? And I think what you're doing at Functional Patterns is to start for that, to get people back in alignment with where they truly should be. I understand the world can be very heavy, but you don't have to allow that world to dictate where you end up in your future. Now, I know you want to say something, but we are going to be wrapping up and I do want you to give some final words. It can be on that last topic, or it could be on something you wanted to say. And then after, I want you to tell everyone where they can find you. For sure. Yeah. The examples you were bringing about is, are exactly the type of people that are coming in. Whether you're a parent, whether you're just a person living the dream in Austin, Texas, whether you're a hardworking professional and entrepreneur, whether you're a CEO, maybe you are a college person, college kid, getting into the, the swings of life and how it deals these heavy hands to you or whether you're just a, a seasoned professional and person on this earth that's tired of going through monotony. We take anyone and everyone from every angle and aspect, and they've expressed similar things that you've already touched on, Michael, which is something that people feel like they're isolated in. And what we've observed is all the people that come in to our facility, they're looking for a solution. The, the same phrasing or word in, or sentence in some way or shape or form is always, where have y'all been this whole entire time? Why have I heard about y'all? Like, this is the one stop, last stop shop. Y'all are doing everything that we've heard about that you need to be doing, but no one's ever presented it the way that y'all have. Let alone, my body's never done these uh, corrective exercise motions or these strength training uh, exercises that position all these muscles together that makes me actually feel better. But I feel like I have more energy. I feel like I sleep better. And all we're doing is half the amount of work and we're doing something that actually feels awkward for the first time in my life. And they're giving us the feedback of they can move optimally. They can move pain-free. They feel like they have control of their bodies and their mind and their life. Or they're able to share this with other people that are in worse off positions where they know that they're uh, dealing with something that's much more severe than what they walked in with. So I just want to touch on that point that uh, I do agree uh, with that notion. We're not alone in this. And our community has taken in the whole gambit the whole big enchilada of everyone coming from every angle of life. We we're able to serve up a dish that's a bit more digestible, a little different, but very, very effective and something they would like to share on their table for everyone else. And where can people find you? They can find us online at functionalpatternstexas.com. They can find us on Instagram at FP Texas. You can also find us on Facebook the same way. Our location is over here in Terrytown at 2414. Exposition Boulevard, Suite B110. And we have a team of 12 people. We have an extended open space for our group classes, our assessment, our one-on-one -on -one training. We have massage. We have essentially everything and anything you need in our facility to help accommodate your needs wherever they need to be. 
Perfect. And I'm going to make it easy for everyone. All the links are going to be in the description box below. Check them out. And I encourage everyone to check them out because this is not your typical Planet Fitness. This is not your commercial gym. This is beyond that. As I said early on in the beginning of this interview, we are changing the way health and fitness is being done. It's not going to be going into the gym feeling fear that you're going to do a machine wrong. This is going in, learning about your body, learning how you can get back to where you need to be so everyone else around you can prosper. That means your family, your friends, maybe even in your workplace. Everyone is going to see you doing well, and that is important, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to be comfortable in your body. You want your body to be functional, and that is why Functional Patterns is in existence. Functional Patterns Texas, thank you so much, Benjamin, for coming on, spending some time with us, and sharing about your new way to help people get into a better life. I appreciate it, Michael. This is uh, Benjamin at Functional Patterns Texas, reminding y'all to live intentionally and not habitually. Thank you again for having me on. All right, everyone, I'd like to thank you so much for watching that interview with Benjamin and myself. As you can see, Functional Patterns is doing it different. When I started to think about like, this is like new age space stuff happening right now because it is so interesting to go in, to see the facility, to see how they do things, and then to look at the videos of what people were before and then what they were after. And I don't know if anyone saw the movie I believe it was Wally or something where it was like a robot or whatever. And he was on Earth and he had to like find life or whatever. But then everyone else was in space and everyone else was fat and they all had chairs and stuff moving them around. But there was also areas for fitness and the machines were kind of doing it for them. And in a sense, this is not so much of that, but it's like they have so much technology and they have so much wisdom over at Functional Patterns, Texas. It's like you go in there. And you can just see like, oh my God, like this is what's happening to the body. And you learn so much about your body because if you have a problem, back problem, knee problem, elbow problem, whatever problem, they're starting to see, okay, well, let's ask the right questions, figure out what happened, and then let's start to fix it. This is going to be a healing process, people. This is not something that you're going to start for a week and then you're automatically better. Most people don't realize that if you hurt your body, most likely you were doing it year after year after year after year. And it can take some time for you to get back. But what I can say and from what I've seen happen over at Functional Patterns Texas is that people do get back. People who thought they couldn't walk again, people who thought that they would never be able to run with their kids, people who thought that maybe they would never lose the weight, do it. And it starts with just understanding the body. I don't know many other health practitioners who know the body so well. Yes, you can know macros. Yes, you can know nutrition a little bit. But to know the biomechanics of the body and how it should be moving and if it's moving the wrong way, this is the fix. It's very reminiscent of when I was a swim instructor. It's like we were trained to see all of the little nuances. What can make them better? What needs to be fixed? How can we make this perfect? That is what I saw when I went there. People were getting better. So you just have to ask yourself, do you want to get better? And if the answer is yes, what are you waiting for? I always recommend if you are in a place that needs to be healed, it could be small, it could be big. Maybe you feel like, oh, I got a little elbow problem. Oh, I have a knee problem. Oh, I have a back problem. From there, you just have to ask the question, hey, I have a back problem. Can you help me? Hey, I have an elbow problem. Can you help me? Hey, I have joint problems. Can you help me? And the answer, speaking with Benjamin for quite some time, is yes, they can because they have helped so many people before. You can look at their testimonials, their reviews, their videos, the pictures of before and after. The before and after are astounding because people don't even realize that maybe they're living life slouched over in pain until it is too much to handle. So don't wait until life is too much to handle. Everything can be done to mitigate true severe pain. We don't need you to be hurting. We don't need you to be limping everywhere. We need you to be your best self. When you are your best self, the world becomes a better place because they need that goodness. They need you to be in that peak optimal fitness and also in the mental state too. Because when that happens, you make the world a better place. 
My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, email me coaching at session at gmail.com. Feel free to check out the links in the description box below again and learn more about Functional Patterns Texas and learn more what we do here at Reverend Concepts to learn how you can start to begin to change your life. Until the next episode, everyone take care.